we work very hard for our money and my husband took a week of vacation for this trip. I am left now sitting here feeling ripped off. Hey everybody, it's Jen. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is my review of my very first sailing on Virgin Voyages. We sailed out of Miami. We did a four night itinerary that went to Key West and Bimini Bahamas. There was some good, there was some very good, and then there was some very, very bad and concerning that may mean we never sail on Virgin Voyages again. And I'm gonna tell you about that toward the end of the video. And I'm really glad that you're here. I'm stressed about bringing this video to you guys. That's just all there is to it. I don't want this to be sensational. I don't want this to be overly dramatic. Yes, I am aware that being able to schedule on a cruise at all is a huge privilege and a blessing. Um, so this is more for those of you that are considering Virgin Voyages. I promised you a review. Um, just a little bit about my background. I have done an adult soulmate cruise before on Viking Sea and absolutely loved it, but predominantly I sail on Disney Cruise Line. Um, we don't um, have little kids. Our kids are all grown. So all of my sailings have been with adults only. Um, so, you know, it, I, I feel with about 10 cruises under my belt that I have a pretty good idea of what one can expect in certain areas and what is really just beyond the pale and unacceptable. So we're, we're gonna talk about things that, that were good first, then we're gonna get into some things that were actually shockingly bad and in my brain bordered on negligent. There was some good. There was some really, really good. Let's start with like the vibe on the ship. I had been concerned before we went that the vibe was gonna be like too party centric, that it was gonna be a much wilder scene than what I'm comfortable with. And we're very open-minded people. So we're like live and let live. But also on my vacation, I wanna feel like I fit in with the crowd. I need not have been worried about that. The crowd was wonderful. The vibe on the ship was wonderful. The The crew were amazing. Um, aside from the sailor services response. Again, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, lots of people who were there just to enjoy themselves. Um, I kind of feel like Virgin Voyages is a little bit like choose your own adventure because there's this whole like wellness track. So if you are into yoga and, and quiet spaces and the spa was amazing. Interestingly, the spa on board is run by the same people who run um, the Disney spas. So I felt very much at home. I actually got the unlimited uh, package for their thermal suite, which is kind of like the rainforest room on Disney Cruise Line. And that was amazing. It was $259 and I felt like it was actually a really good value. I spent a lot of time in there. And then, um, yeah, I, I just, it, it definitely did not have the vibe I was expecting. And if you are like us and you were back in the cabin by like 10, 30, 11, 11, 30 every night, there was nothing wild and crazy going on. Now, I don't know what happened after I went to bed, um, but there was nothing that I saw that was anywhere close to inappropriate. Um, the shows, I was worried that like the shows would be too much for me or whatever, no not even a little bit. In fact, I was chatting with the cast of one of the shows. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but the show was so good that I was like in tears when I was chatting with the cast because they were eating dinner in the galley the same time we were. Um, the, the shows are just beyond excellent. The, the talent on that ship is just crazy. And honestly, the best entertainment I've seen at sea, and I already told you I'm a Disney Cruise Line person, so that is really saying a lot. It's very different than Disney Cruise Line and certainly than the entertainment we saw on Viking Sea. A lot more choreography based, a lot more like acrobatics based, but so, so good. And the shows all had this like wholesome storyline. They were all very uplifting and about friendship and connection. And I was not expecting that. Like I was in tears multiple times and um, just both shows, excellent. I wish we had seen all the shows, but we couldn't get reservations for everything. Um, so entertainment was great. The vibe on the ship was great. Food, we didn't get to experience a lot of it uh, because we couldn't get reservations. And they say there'll be more available once you get on ship. We never could get reservations. Uh, we booked really last minute, so I kind of understood that. But at the same time, it was kind of a bummer. We ended up eating in the galley every night but one because we never could get reservations before like 9.30 at night. So 
Wasn't thrilled about that. Although the one night we did eat at Razzle Dazzle, the food was excellent, but the portions were very small. And my husband is six foot four. That's gonna be important later. And he works out like an hour and a half every day. So he needs a lot of food. So even the night we did Razzle Dazzle, we ended up doing second dinner <laughs> at the galley, which was totally fine. Um, and the galley actually was really good. So let's move more into food. Um, very impressed with the galley. It's more like a food court than a buffet. They make all the food fresh for you. I loved that they had a breakfast all day area so I could get an omelet at like 10 o'clock at night if I wanted. Um, the bakery was great. So much fresh food. Like there's really an emphasis on high quality food and you can really tell. So again, all of that was just fabulous. Now let's move into some opportunities. The first room we were assigned was an XLC terrace, and it was actually an accessible room, which obviously um, they only assign those when they're sure that no one is requiring them. We had booked a VGT uh, cruise fare, so we did get a big discount. The accessible cabin was fine. In fact, I did a whole room tour of it, um, and my patrons have that. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna post that publicly, just because part of me is not wanting to promote Virgin that much, if I'm going to be honest. Um, but the XLC Terrace we had as our first cabin uh, was really, really nice. Um, beautiful, uh, big, loved our, our um, veranda was gorgeous. The bathroom was really big. We did have some like mold issues in the shower, which they came and deep cleaned for us and that took care of it, which I appreciated. Um, and we did have some issues with the door. It kept like coming open on its own, the bathroom door like when you're in there doing your business and I love my husband, but also I want my privacy when I'm in a bathroom. Uh, so we did have a few issues that way. They're also, ca the cabin quality does not seem to match the rest of the ship. Maybe the Rockstar Suites do, but the XLC Terrace, it was fine, but the cabins themselves feel very three and a half star hotel, whereas the rest of the ship felt like four and a half, five star. So that was a little odd to me. And little things like in the bathrooms, all they give you for soap is this tiny little, like there's body wash, shampoo and conditioner on the wall in the shower. But then by the sink, you just have this little sliver of like days in sized soap. And with the prices that they're charging, that really shocked me because Disney and Viking Sea both, of course, you have, you know, full amenities in the bathroom. And that was just very strange. And also they never replenished the soap. Like we had that one little bar of soap and that was all we got for the four night cruise. I'm sure I could have asked for more, but it just, it feels to me like they went cheap with the cabins. The first bed we had in the XLC Terrace that was the accessible room was very, very comfortable, but the going cheap on the cabins will make more sense in a minute once I tell you why we had to move. I would rate everything until I got to the cabin part like a four and a half or a five out of five. The cabins, three, maybe three and a half out of five, and this was before the big thing that happened happened. So before I tell you the big thing that happened, one of my patrons said it so well. She said, is it the thing that happened or is it the way they handled the thing that happened? And it's for sure the way they handled the thing that happened. We are still chatting with Virgin Voyages to try to get reimbursed for the experience we got versus the experience that we paid for. I, sitting here right now, have a very bad taste in my mouth about Virgin Voyages. And I don't want this next part to be sensational or overly dramatic in any way, but it, we did feel very uneasy about what happened. So we went, spent our first night, lovely. We were really having fun, starting to relax. We went into Old Key West, not Old Key West. That's the resort at Disney. We went into Key West. We toured um, Hemingway's home and museum, which was incredible. Absolutely love that. Came back to the cabin and we didn't have any power in our room. Now, um, I called down to Sailor Services. I said, we, you know, we have no power. And she said, yeah, over 200 cabins were affected by a power outage on the ship. We think it should be resolved quickly. I'm like, okay, well, um, we'll check back um, after dinner. So I quickly got ready because obviously the sun was starting to set and it was gonna get real dark in that room really fast. The people in interior cabins, I don't even know how they would have gotten dressed for dinner. Cause keep in mind, over 200 cabins were affected. This will be important later. So quickly got ready for Scarlet Night, which I was so excited about. I had bought a special dress. It was this whole thing. If you watch my packing video, I was very excited about Scarlet Night. 
Um, and we headed out to dinner. Um, we had a lovely dinner um, in the galley, which is odd, um, again, because we couldn't get a reservation, but we had um, some champagne in the sip bar, which was really good. For, well, I did, Scott doesn't drink. And we were gonna just go straight to like the casino and the shows and everything, because it was Scarlet Night, and I was really excited to see what that was all about. And I, something in me was like, we should go back to the room and double check. We go back to the room and I'm like, oh, thank goodness we have power. But then we quickly realize that every light in the cabin is on and that the air conditioning is stuck on the highest setting and that we can't turn anything off. So call Sailor Services. Hey, so before we had no power and now we have all the power, what do we do? She said, oh my gosh, let's, um, we can move you to another cabin but why don't you go to the evening activities and then when you get back, um, you know, we'll see what's going on. So you know that feeling you get when like your flight keeps getting delayed and you're pretty sure it's gonna get canceled and you start seeing if you could rebook yourself on the next flight? That was the feeling I had. So Scott and I chatted about it for a minute, maybe 15 minutes, trying to decide what to do, knowing that it's Scarlet Night, knowing that we're probably not gonna get back till really late. And I called her back and I said, we wanna go ahead and move. She said, okay, that's fine, but we're gonna to have to downgrade you from the room you're in to a regular sea terrace. And I said, okay, I get that, but I would rather have electricity, um, even if I'm in a downgraded room. I, are you sensing like a little did she know here? That's, that, yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. So they come to escort us to the new room, which that also felt a little stressful because they needed to escort us because some reason with our C-bands, they needed to make sure that we were like not able to get into the old room. We were moved into the new room. We, we got everything packed up really fast. I had completely unpacked too. So this was not fun. It was stressful. The guy came to the door super fast. We're like throwing everything in bags. We get moved to the new room, way smaller than, all, than our old room, but I'm like, okay, we have power. Now, the biggest issue with the XLC terraces versus the regular C terraces is the bathrooms are much smaller. And I knew that would be a problem with Scott and it was. But also, and I don't know if it's because we were in an accessible room the first time or if the XLC terraces actually have better mattresses, but the bed on the regular C terrace, in the regular C terrace cabin, basically feels like sleeping on a gymnastics mat. And I'm not kidding. Like, it, it was terrible. At first I was like, it's a glorified futon. And then I was like, no, this feels like a gymnastics mat worst mattress I've ever slept on. It made sense all of a sudden to me why when we were checking in, a woman a few doors down from our first cabin immediately asked for a mattress topper because apparently they have those available. But the bed on in the regular sea terrace was just unacceptably uncomfortable. And my husband was actually not really able to shower in the shower. Um, a friend of mine texted me the meme from Elf when he's like trying to, to shower in the tiny shower. That's how Scott felt. Um, really did not work for him. So it was a huge downgrade for us. I was feeling sorry for myself, wah, wah, wasn't happy, but I was like trying to, to like regroup and I just didn't have it in me to go out for Scarlet Night because by this time it was probably 10.30 and I was just defeated and tired and we'd been at Key West all day walking around. I was like, I just, I don't even wanna go out and see stuff. So we went to bed. So we completely missed Scarlet Night, which we had really been looking forward to. And I was feeling sorry for myself. The next morning, I start chatting with fellow passengers. Now, I'm not going to share any of the stories from fellow passengers. If you are on our sailing and you would like to share your story, and I know several of you watching were on that sailing, feel free to comment your experience below. I am not gonna share other people's stories I have no desire to be sensational. Suffice it to say, I could be. I, I know stories that were told to me firsthand that I'm not going to share because they're not my story to tell, all of the things. But if you want to comment your experience, all I, I will tell you this, I know that the Facebook group for this cruise, the moderator had to shut down the comments because people were so upset. Basically, the cabins that did not have power, many of them never did get power. And because it affected so many cabins, there was nowhere to move people. So some cabins were stuck with all of the lights on and people were unable to sleep and were unable to be moved. All the lights on and all the air conditioning at full blast. 
Other cabins had no power at all and people had no air conditioning. And if you're in an interior cabin, you can imagine what this was like. And the worst part was none of us were getting any response from sailor services. Every time we reached out, it was us reaching out to them. At no point was, were we messaged. Was there a note put under our door? Were we called? And keep in mind, there were multiple ways that Virgin had to communicate with those of us that were sailing. So it's not like no matter where we were on the ship, they couldn't communicate to us. Every single person I talked to that got any kind of action at all, it was from calling and calling and calling. The line at Sailor Services was like all the way down the hallway. I finally started doing the chat feature the next day, but the response from Sailor Services, when it, you're, you're really, you're held captive on a cruise ship, right? You can't just pack up your bags and go home. Scott's perspective was he couldn't get over that we left Key West when they knew they had 200 cabins with power issues and no ability to move people to working cabins. That seemed really unsafe to him. Um, I, I don't know that it was really unsafe, but I see why he feels that way. Um, it did feel negligent, um, especially because we weren't given that information um, until after we had sailed away. And um, the indifference to everyone being upset about it was, was palpable throughout the ship. And um, again, you, you, this may be your first time watching one of my videos, my longtime viewers know I am not one to be sensational or overly dramatic. Y'all, this was bad. It was really bad. And honestly, it, it tainted the whole rest of the cruise for us. So I decided when I woke up and I heard how lucky we were, how lucky we were that we were even in a cabin that was fully operational. I decided to just, this was our day at sea. I decided to just like turn it off like a light bulb and just do my best to enjoy the day. I was in the spa a lot. Um, one of the things I loved on the ship is there's multiple areas that you can walk. Um, there's a walking deck on the very top, and then deck seven is like a promenade, and you can walk the entire deck. Absolutely lovely. Um, we really did try to enjoy a fun day. We were in the arcade. We were in the casino, and I was like, okay, I, I just need to like not think about this for a while. So then later in the afternoon, I decided to call down because I needed to get some resolution. Um, we were not going to be able to move back into our XLC Terrace, and I wanted to know how the cruise line was going to compensate us for what we had paid versus what we got, which was a downgraded cabin. I, I believe the difference was probably around... I don't know, six, $700 in the fare difference between the two rooms. And then if you add into that all of the stress, but keep in mind, we are the lucky ones at this point because we at least had a working cabin. Called down there, um, they said, you know, we'll have a manager call you back. Nobody ever called me back. Um, I called again and they said someone would get back to me. No one ever did. At this point, I decided to move the conversation to the chat feature because I thought, well, at least then I'll have like a screenshot and I'll show you guys the screenshots here. Um, said, you know, how will we be compensated? And the guy said, well, we can give you $150 stateroom credit um, for the downgrade. I was like, okay, that, that really isn't sufficient. Um, try to be very polite. It's not this guy's fault. I'm like, how can we escalate the matter? It's like, okay, we'll have a manager get back to you. Hours go by, nobody gets back to me. Now um, it's the next day. I'm starting to get concerned because we're in Bimini at this point. I know things are gonna get crazy with sailor services. People have not been happy on this voyage. Bimini was okay. There were issues with food service and no clean glasses and things like that. They have a private beach club there. The vibe there was really loud and there was really nowhere to go to be quiet. So I didn't love that. Um, but that was a minor concern compared to everything else. So when we get back from Bimini, I'm like chatting again. Now a manager gets back to me. The manager says all we can do is $150 onboard credit. Finally, they tell me that they're going to bring a letter to the room that has a case number so that I can follow up once we get back on shore. So now I'm just mad. I feel they're not responding in any way to, I, I just, felt like they weren't, I just felt like they didn't care. And based, it, it just felt really crappy. And at this point I had talked to many other passengers who had expressed similar frustration. So it wasn't just us. Um, 
but I was like, okay, I've done everything I can on the ship. We're just going to finish out the evening. That night was when we saw that really, really good show, which thank God we saw that show because it was like so good and so like resetting for me. Um, so then we are like packing up because we're like, okay, we have to leave the next day. All throughout the last couple days of the sailing, they'd been talking about if you booked your next voyage while you were on the cruise, you could get $600 off and a $300 stateroom credit. Well, we're like, there's no way we're booking again on this cruise line. So then like this kind of added insult to injury. All of the cabins that had been affected, we all got a letter under our door that said, ahoy sailor, we're sorry for the inconvenience. We'd like to offer you a $350 onboard credit for your next sailing, good for the next two years. So I'm like, granted, yeah, we can use that onboard credit for the next two years, but you just offered $300 to literally everyone on this ship. So it just felt like insult to injury. And, and then I was like, now I'm mad. Like it just, again, let these be our problems, but we work very hard for our money. And my husband took a week of vacation for this trip. I am left now sitting here feeling ripped off because nothing has been done. Now, as I'm recording this, um, it is Thursday. I sent an email to Virgin on Monday. I called on Wednesday to double check that they had received my email. She assured me that they do have it and that they are escalating it to highest priority, but I have yet to hear anything from Virgin. If and when I hear from Virgin, I will do a follow-up video for you guys. At this point, I have to say, even if they offered me a free cruise, I'm not sure I'd be willing to risk the time. Um, it was very, very disappointing. And you know, th there's a saying about, you can tell how good a company is, not when things go right, but when things go wrong. And the lack of empowerment that the people on board the ship had to make things right for the customer was appalling to me. We got off pretty good. There were people on our sailing, some of which will probably comment below, that had it way worse than we did. We never like lost a night's sleep. I, again, I'm not gonna share stories that aren't mine to share. If you were on there, comment below. Just trust me when I tell you, many, many people had it far worse than we did, which is one of the reasons I wanted to make this video. If, if this had only happened to me, I'm not even sure I would be sharing this. I probably just wouldn't have shared any review at all, but it happened to so many people who don't have YouTube channels and have felt very neglected in this entire process, who took time off work and spent thousands of dollars to be on this cruise and have felt very robbed of their money and their time. And it's unacceptable. So, before we sailed Virgin Voyages, I was concerned about the things that I mentioned in the beginning. None of those things were an issue at all. It was a lovely group of people on a lovely ship with lovely weather in, in a beautiful sea. But Virgin Voyages' response to what we feel was negligence on their part with over 200 cabins is unacceptable. I hope that they can fix it. I feel these are fixable problems we will not be chancing it. My sincerest um, desire though is to encourage change. And I will never say that I would never sail with Virgin Voyages again, but certainly not for quite some time. And um, yeah, I was so nervous to film this video. I was so anxious that I would present things in a fair light, but you are a consumer who trusts me as I travel to bring you fair reviews. And I spent between the sailing and what we spent with the, the spa and everything over $2,000 on this cruise. And I believe I received maybe 40% of that value. And almost all of that was in the entertainment and the amazing crew, um, specifically in the galley, the people that took care of our stateroom, all of that. But it's not okay. Make your own decisions based on what I've said. If you already have a Virgin Voyage scheduled, I would definitely, uh, get the mattress topper, um, but you guys can just make your own decisions. I'm not ever going to tell anybody what they should or shouldn't do with their money. I just am telling my own story. Obviously, this was not sponsored by Virgin. <laughs> I hope whatever you're doing today, you're finding joy. And I will end with this. I still had a fabulous time with Scott LaForge, my husband of 34 years. But as one of my patrons said, you two would have fun in a paper bag. 
and that's actually true. We have fun going to the car wash together. So did I enjoy my cruise? Yes, but it was because of the man that I married and the ocean and the nature and their performers, and there you go. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.